I do a lot of those, and the reason being is there's a lot that you can talk about when it comes to SQL Server. If you do have any additional questions of what we've already talked about, please put them into the, the question list and we'll look at those towards the end. But the next thing I want to get into here is talking about how we access our SQL Server. Because accessing SQL Server is, for, for most of us, that's what we really care about. When it comes to today's um, environments where we've got things going up into the cloud, we've got managed hosting, uh, securing the SQL Server is, for a lot of us, is less and less of the focus. And it's more about how we can go out there and access that our SQL Server instance. And when we're accessing our SQL Server, there is the basics where we start off with, and that is the login. Now, our login can have either Windows authentication, and, or it can be SQL Server authentication, it can be controlled by a certificate, or it can be tied to an asymmetric key. Now, when it comes to a Windows login, you're going to be looking at, looking at using either groups or users. The preference that I've always had as we've as I've done security is to go by group authentication. And the reason to go with group authentication is that you it's easier to manage the members of a group through a through an active directory domain than it is to add every single user. If you've got a company that's got a couple hundred people, if you can group those people into a few different distinct groups that tie into the departments that they work in, that's much easier to work with then adding each one of those people individually to each of the roles that they need to be tied into. And for that reason, you know, tend to work, want to work with groups. Now, when it comes to logins, generally you're going to be wanting to work with Windows authentication over SQL Server authentication. And the main reason for this is that it's, again, a little bit more easier to work with because you can have those groups and also now, this isn't so much an issue with SQL Server 2012, but in previous versions of SQL Server, uh, SQL Server authentication wasn't quite as secure. If somebody could get onto the network and uh, grab network packets, they could figure out what your password is and log into your SQL Server that way. Now, in most cases, that was kind of an unrealistic expectation that there was going to be somebody bad on the network that was going to be monitoring packets that was going to be then able to pull out your passwords and figure out what it was, but it was still a real threat. Now you also have the ability to do certificates and asymmetric keys, and I'll talk about those in just a moment. But let's talk a little bit more about SQL Server authentication, because over the years people have kind of shied away from it because of it was previously less secure. But there's a lot that's been done since SQL Server 2008 that, have made, that has made SQL Server authentication more secure. The big thing is that you have to make sure that you're actually using these additional features. And so now with SQL Server uh, authentication, you're able to enforce password policy. And this password policy does bring in a number of items that are kind of important to have, and you need to make sure that when you're doing SQL Server authentication that you're using these. Now the big one that it's going to do is it offers password complexity. How many capital letters, how many lowercase letters, how long it has to be, what combination of different types of characters need to be in there, whether it's often numeric, whether there's any special characters, you know, whatever you set up at, on the domain as the rules for password complexity for your Windows accounts is going to translate into the same complexity that you have with your password policy. And this may be a pain because we all love coming up with passwords that have just the right number, of, just the right amount of complexity but you do want to carry this over into SQL Server. The other, thing, the other thing that it brings over is it brings over the password history so people can't continue to reuse the same passwords over and over again. You know, it ties into whatever your network domain policy is around that. And then it also has lock, account lockout duration and thresholds. And so if somebody starts logging in with a bad, with a bad password over and over and over again, they're going to eventually get locked out and then it won't be able to be used until that duration is met again, which then helps make SQL Server authentication much more secure. Because in the past, when people weren't, weren't when these features weren't available, somebody could just turn on a uh, 
brute force attack, brute force attack, and just go after and try every single possible password that they could come up with. But with the addition of password policy, that's no longer that much of an issue. Of course, unless you're not using it. Um, the other thing it does is it helps with with secret server authentication. It will enforce password expiration. You can disable that. Uh, depending upon what you're using the account for, sometimes that's worthwhile. If you're using it for some sort of service or application that will never change, you, know, you may want to turn off password expiration. And then you can also set it for a change password at next login. So you can set people up with, with accounts and then you, you can have your junior DBAs do that where they set that up and give you, give you somebody their first password for their account and then they have to change it later. So all of these things have made SQL Server authentication much more secure than it has been in the past. Now when you're talking about advanced access to your SQL Server instance, is where you're going to be looking at certificates and asymmetric keys. Both of these basically allow for login-less access and permissions to be granted throughout your SQL Server instance. It's a little bit deeper than an introductory topic, but what I wanted to get across today is that if you need to grant access to something and it doesn't seem like you can do it with just a grant or you want to give somebody partial access to something or lock it down with the start procedure, you can control what that, the permissions that a start procedure or a view have by tying in certificates and asymmetric keys. And so if you need very granular permissions, there is the ability to do that. Just take a look at certificates and asymmetric keys and you'll see how you can do those kind of things. But I don't want to get too, too muddled into that because that's kind of an advanced topic that can cover basically its own session. Because now that we're able to get into the SQL Server using our logins, whether they are SQL Server authentication or it is uh, Windows authentication, the next thing you need to do is control that access. So how do you get in there and determine what people have access to? 